Let me first of all say that um, it's really a great privilege to have this opportunity because one of the things I like to do, I think like this is Awashika said, we've all been called upon to be an influencer of sorts. So they say with great responsibility, with great opportunity comes great responsibility. So we all have a responsibility to impact um, the younger generation one way or the other. And for me, you know, being given this platform is a great privilege and I don't take it very, I take it lightly. So thank you very much. Um, coming to my story, my story is actually very, it needs a book. I've been in the law, I was in law practice for a long time. I know you grow up having limitations especially in an environment where men are in charge. When I went into the oil and gas industry, I thought that I was limited because I'm not a professional um, a petroleum engineer or a geologist. I thought that I was limited to doing certain things. And one of the things she talked about was, you know, having access to information and being told what you can or cannot do. We should never believe any story that limits us in any way. It wasn't until I went to Harvard, you know, uh, my daughter is here, she knows. When I came back, I felt like I could fly. Because what it was is that they made you feel like the, the, the sky is your limit. I went to, if anybody has the opportunity, I know this is expensive, it's called the Women's uh, Leadership Forum of Harvard Business School. If you have the opportunity, because sometimes the organizations are offering you these things, and you don't even take advantage of it. I pay every dime by myself. Because when you reach a, a point, you know, when in your life, let me just throw in this as a, you know, a, an advice. When in your life you find that you've, you can't see your way clear, you know, uh, of um, any way to go next, what you do is like hitting a brick wall. Take the step backwards, and then you find that the vista will open up for you. So going to that program opened up the vista for me and I was able to see that there was actually nothing. Nobody's limiting you. So I took the bold step to become, uh, go, uh, become a CEO of a company that I used to be on their board. But I never had the ambition to be the CEO. It never occurred to me that I could, as a lawyer, be the, the managing director of an oil and gas company. But you know, once you're told that you can, you find that you can actually do it. So our responsibility to our children and our sisters and every female that we have influence over is to keep telling them that they can. There is nothing they cannot do. There is no opportunity that is open to men that they cannot aspire to. In our country, Nigeria, you know, things have actually changed. The truth is that the world has changed. If you look around you, women have more power and more wealth than they ever did. So the truth is that that um, um, glass ceiling we talk about, it doesn't really exist. It only exists in our own minds. Maybe for cultural or social or family reasons, we put a glass ceiling above us. It does not exist. Look, at, look around in Nigeria. See the number of women holding uh, at the hem of affairs in companies. That's because somebody told them that they could do it. Nobody will give it to you. You must take opportunities as they present themselves to you. If you wait for them to give it to you, nobody will give it to you. But the world changing also means that we as Nigerian women have more responsibility. You know, if you listen to her carefully, we have more responsibility now than we ever did. Because what it is, is that the fate of this country is in our hands. They told us that we're global drivers of change, global, they have all sorts of technologies for women, which we all invite, the United Nations, even I had to go and look at the uh, meaning of womanomics. I have to confess, I never heard about womanomics until I was contacted by the Alakija Foundation. But what it means is that with more uh, uh, women uh, impact, uh, uh, given more opportunity, they impact the economy of their nation. So but what I want to challenge all of us today is, what are we doing for social change in Nigeria? Can you imagine if we all came together and had one voice, one harmonious voice. I say harmonious because you know, our voices are, are better than the men's voice. So it will be harmonious. But saying the same thing, asking for the same things. Look around you, the level of impunity in Nigeria is staggering. Are we going to say that we don't know? 
I would going to pretend that there's nothing we can do. Women, by nature, we are coming spirits, we like to unify, we like to pacify, we like to... But this is the time for us to speak out in one voice. Unless we speak it in one voice, they will destroy this country for our children. There won't be anything left. What are we afraid of? There's nothing to be afraid of. The, the thing is that if we allow the men, they will keep us distracted and keep us apart unless we take the opportunity. So, please, just one second. Yes, yes. One, uh, one northern friend of mine who has many wives, I asked him, how do you keep everybody happy? He said, ah, it's very easy. Just sow the seed of discord amongst them. And there's no power. So you can imagine the power we would have if we were all together doing the same thing, asking the same questions, asking for the same things. Thank you very much. You've also been someone who's made a transition from the legal profession, a bit of broadcasting, let's say, and then politics. Uh, a game that people feel, again, is a man's game. How have you been able to, you know, to, to bridge that gender gap in places of, um, high places in, in executive areas? Because we have Mr. Wishika here as well, who has said to us that you can do anything, but then you find that sometimes, it's just not as easy. So you just think something is in your way. How did you do it? Share your secret. Good afternoon, everyone. I must um, say a big compliment to Mrs. Florosha Alakija for creating this forum, Flourish Africa. It's synonymous with her name, Florosha Alakija. As a politician, I see things. In many ways, in different ways. And then, if I want to talk about women today, I will not end the topic because it's endless. Because one thing we women must not do is um, let anybody give us low self esteem. It is often said that if you train a woman, you train a nation. Any country that has not included women. You know, the women in, in their government, policy making, decision making, they cannot succeed. Rwanda today is given a, as an example yes. of one of the well, fastest growing countries in Africa the, and the economy. That is because they have over 50% of women in policy and decision making, and you know, in politics and, as well. And um, like Ms. Salafi just said, I would like to start from the beginning because uh, everything here is based on natural justice, equity, and good conscience. You know, God made Adam. He did not make Adam alone. He, because he knew Adam cannot do it alone. He included God and the woman to give the help and hand. We must complement each other. You know, it's not a man's word. Like women have been like if you ask a typical man. He, uh, he will tell you, hi, is your wife? Fine. What does she do? She doesn't work. She's a housewife. That's what most men say. My wife does not work. She's a housewife. Do you know the amount of work the woman does? I hope. You are the mother of the man, mother of the children. You cook. You know, you look after the home. And the man says, my wife does not work. She's a housewife. When you are the a cook, the cook has a job. He pays the cook. If you are the maid, the maid has a work, and he has a job, you pay the maid. Then why would you say, my wife does not work, she's a housewife? You know, so we must change that totally. Uh, like, for women to succeed, definitely, you have to work twice the man, as much as the man. Like my um, moderator here, she introduced me as Mrs. Daisy Danjuma. Let's start from you. You will not call David Mack Mr. David Mack. Yes. Because I'm Mrs. does not mean you forget the title senator. I end it. You know, 
to be extremely hardworking. If you go to any market today, how many men will find it? Yes. The economy of Nigeria is run by women. Yes. 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 Go to the market, you know, like Mr. Lafayette just said, many men marry many wives to have a labor, you know, to work in the farms, to sell, and, um, you know, most of the um, money generated the economy, the economy of a country like Africa, like most African women, they put in so much, yet they get so little. They are uh, like, I'll give you a simple example. In India, women are given loans because they are the ones who repay. Like, I always give an example when I was campaigning as a politician. Like, you should, you should all know, know this, you know. We women put in a lot. If, like, a husband and wife now, you are, you are, uh, your child cannot pay the, the school fees. No man will sell his jeep to go and pay school fees. But you women, you will sell your dress, you sell everything to make sure your child goes to school. But the men will not do that. And you say women are not the change makers. They are the ones who make the change. You know? It's always, um, always very, very, very important that if you want a country to succeed, you train your women. The millennial development goals, goals four, five, six, all concerned the women. And the women, if these goals are not achieved, girl child education, girl child education, maternal and um, uh, maternal uh, mortality, child mortality, you know, that if these goals are not met, that we cannot achieve a nation because a healthy nation is a wealthy nation. And where does it start from? From the home. When you train a woman, the woman knows how, you know, that when it's time to inoculate the children, immunization, you know, and um, women are the agents of change. A woman builds a healthy society. And when it comes to a uh, conflict resolution, it is women at the head, you know, at the forefront of building a peaceful society. Because, number one, they are the ones that they are very involved in dealing a traumatized society after war. They are very much involved in reconciliation, rehabilitation, and rebuilding a society after crisis. You know, we suffer the most. You you say that um, I have a um, uh, multi work experience. Okay, yes. I, I'm a lawyer by profession. I chose law because I wanted to be versatile, people to, to be able to work in wherever, you know, in industry. I chose to. But, but the main thing was that I did not like mathematics. But I ended up working in the bank, though I wasn't in the treasury or whatever it is. So there was a bit of strategic position. Oh, definitely. You know? And uh, most women, wherever you find yourself, it's too hard work. Hard luck to it, but you must be hard working to be able to sustain whatever you have achieved. Mr. Patricia did not get her oil block overnight. She worked hard, she did a lot of research, she got there, and she sustained it. And that's why she's who she is today. We are all here today because we've taken a particular step to be here. And the only way you can do it better to go to the next level is to work very hard so you can sustain where you are, move to the next level. And um, talking about women, I don't think we will end our uh, topic today if you decide. Yes, and we will be running on shortly, Senator Andrewman. Thank you for that. Thank you. 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 And you find that uh, women who are coming up say, we work hard, we try our best, we want to get there. Um, this one, share with us some of your wealth building tips. Because some people say it boils down to having money to do that which you want to do or to do ahead. So when we come to conferences and we hear you get there, how do we get there without this finance? Um, 
Unfortunately, you know, I am not in a position to talk about. You are asking how do you get there without finance. But I can talk about how you take advantage of opportunities that you have already. Because one thing that I, I like to talk, um, I have a topic that I always talk on. It's called uh, performance, uh, image, and exposure. So you start first of all with whatever talent God has given you. But when you have that talent, you need to nurture that talent. And you need to do everything you can to... I'm going to assume that with that talent comes performance, very high performance. And you need to make sure that you have the image that fits that talent. Because um, I was telling Mr. Woshika when we were waiting, one of the biggest things, and I'm so happy to find that it's a topic uh, in, uh, today, so please, all of you, wait and listen to it. It's about the social media. You need to use it in a positive way. This generation is the luckiest generation I know because there is no information they cannot get. There, there is nothing they cannot learn about. You don't even need to go to school. You just have to have access to internet. But you need to use it in a positive way. And then sometimes you, you put out the wrong image about yourself without even knowing that you do so. Just because of the things you post on social media. People have the wrong impression and wrong image about you. Because they, 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 they can't take you seriously in the work environment. Because you're not taking yourself seriously. And that's probably not even who you are. But you're competing with all kinds of people. You heard her when she said she competes with no one. Her journey is with herself only. And then after you work on your image, you work on your exposure. You need exposure. Use that social media for positive exposure for whatever talent you have. Instead of using it to share all kinds of strange things, you know, and my children show me certain things on top. And I'm like, is this person actually, what's the person smoking? But it happens, you know. So take advantage of what you have. And unfortunately, I can't speak to how you get the resource or, or to start your business, but start with the opportunities you have, which is the internet, you know, nurture your performance, um, own your image, and take advantage of the exposure. And you've, you've, uh, at least that's a starting point. Thank you. Well, you need tips, not so much. Yes, uh, the main thing is that you must have integrity, you must be focused, and you know what you want. And um, Rob was not built in a day, one step at a time. You know, whatever you want to do, do it very well. If you are a pepper seller, sell it very well, take it to the next level, create avenues where you can maybe packet, package it very well. You know, you, you know, you must be able to improve whatever you are doing. It is the way you want to be seen that you are seen. Take yourself seriously. Like I said, as a woman, you must work twice as much as a man. You must uh, don't have low self-esteem. You must exert yourself uh, in, in whatever aspect of life you choose. Whatever opportunities. A uh, question of luck comes in. At times you are lucky. That comes in. But you must have integrity. Like this is, I wish I wish spoke on a few issues which brought to my mind the question of corruption in Nigeria. You know, when she talked about whatever job you are doing, you must do it, satisfy yourself and know that when you go back to your maker, you have yourself accountable to see what you've done in this world you've come to. Whatever job she's taken, that she she finds herself, you know, that you have opportunities to go left or right, you know, but you take the right path. And whatever you do, you pray, because I can see that Flourish Africa encourages women to pray too. I, I suppose most of you are Christians or, or Muslims, whichever uh, denomination you are, you know, God comes first. And uh, whatever you do, you put God in focus. Be very, very prudent in your spending. You cannot earn five naira and spend six naira. You know, it is not all over the world that most banks would like to give women loan. That's a typical example in India because women know how to 
utilize the loan. They are the only ones who know how to repay loans. Men take loans to do other things, but women are so dedicated. For that reason, you can grow your businesses by taking loans, you have opportunities, you know, and then joining cooperative societies all, all over the world. That's where people succeed. In Bangladesh, she said, very big business. Women are the real workforce. Opportunities come, make use of it. Don't sit down and think manner will come from heaven. It does not come from heaven. You must work hard. Thank you very much.